Oh, that's camera action. We got them. Okay, so. What can I say? Um, new, new regulator, new rectifiers fitted, and she's not charging the battery. And I have a fault somewhere. In order to discover what that fault is, I have to go through every single piece of wiring on the bike, including, don't forget, the negatives, or the, the earth, the grounds, because as I said, most common problems usually start, so I'm gonna have to clean up every single ground today. So, in order to do that, I need a naked bike. There we go, one naked bike. We also need some other bits of equipment, namely a chair, a table, a wiring diagram, and of course, some pens and ruler. There we go. We should be all set now. Right, so the gist of it is this. New regulator on, battery not charging. Why going into the regulator, which is there to inform the regulator how much electricity is being outputted by the stator is reading 0 0.30, it should be less than 0 0.20. So we have, for some reason, a problem somewhere. So we need to rectify that problem, we need to find out where that problem is. So we turn back to our lovely wiring diagram. Because there's no point going anywhere until you've got a destination, until you know where you're going. So you wouldn't drive somewhere, okay, some people would, without a map. But I can tell you now, this is the best way to do it. And as I say, we'll go through it systematically, piece by piece, um, so you can see how I do it. And then hopefully you'll understand, and wiring diagrams won't be that scary for you. I've done a few already, and this is no more different. So the first things we have to do is find some bits and pieces. I'm gonna put this camera down. Down, this camera down. So the first thing we need to find is our regulator and rectifier, which is just here. There's our alternator. And there's our battery. And the wire we want is this wire here, which is the black and white wire. Now on this, the other thing we need to find is ground, which is here. Uh, we've got any more grounds. Ground here, which is on the negative, and that looks like it. This, that's the oil pressure switch, that's the neutral switch, that's the engine coolant, which are negatives anyway, and they're already attached inside the engine bay, and there is no other negatives at all. So it's that one, and the main one from the earth. So we've done that. So they're our main components. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a pen. We're going to get a blue pen this time because we don't want to confuse ourselves. So this is the wire we're after. So again, with our ruler and our pen, trace the wire down, trace the wire across, and we come to a junction. So remember, this is a connector. And where you see a dot, I don't know if you can see that's better, that's it. Where you see a dot like that, that is a junction. There are different things. So we come here, and our first junction takes us to our engine stop sensor, which on the VFR has a tilt sensor. Tilt sensor. So if you go, well, basically if you fall over, it's supposed to shut the engine off. And then we're going to go across here. And we have another junction here, and this junction takes us to the stop start switch, which will be on the handlebars. And then the wire comes down and goes into the fuse box. And I know this fuse, because that's the fuse that kept popping on me. Because with the old one, there was an issue which we will go through later. And that's what kept popping on me. So that's it. So basically, they're my components. So I now know that that wire, the only place it's gonna go is to this, and to the stop start switch. So it's a case of finding where these components are on the bike. So obviously I know where this component is because that's the regulator rectifier and the engine stop start sensor, which will be at the front of the bike, which I will do in blue, good blue Peter fashion as I take a sip of coffee and say, 
here's one I found earlier. So if I go around here, I'm going to put my gloves on while I'm doing it. He says. There we go. Nothing like putting some gloves on. <coughs> it's here. So this is the actual stop start relay. So basically you can see it says up. So it goes in there like that. So if it tilts at any angle, it's supposed to shut it off. And if we look here, we can see a black and white wire. So we have a black and white wire here, which is going into this main winding harness here. You, sorry, white and black, should I say white and black. And then if you look here, in this huddle of connectors here, we have another white and black here. Now, if we trace this one, You'll see it's going to this wire here, which is going to our um, stop start switch, which is there, look, see, going to the stop start switch. So these are the areas that we need to um, examine to see what's going on, or where it's going wrong. But to confirm where we are, we're going to get our lovely multimeter. I love multimeter. We have to call, we're gonna to have to name multimeter something. I'll tell you what, in the comments below, give me a name for them multimeter as I throw my camera on the floor again give me a name for the multimeter we need a we need a multimeter name I know I'm sad I like naming things so there we go right is camera facing multimeter camera is facing multimeter so if we go over remember that one there diode check and continuity so if we stick him there like so we'll take our black wire and this is the one we're interested in, this wire here. So we're going to stick our one end into there. And we're going to get to the other end. And if this is c connecting, we should get a lovely buzzy sound. Put my other end in there, I'll get... Oh, look at that. So, that's definitely the wire. And we go here. And that's definitely the wire. So the problem could be here or it could be here. So what I have to do now is check the plugs. While I'm at it, I'm gonna check these plugs as well. I need to check the wires to make sure I've got no broken wires, no trapped wires, no pinched wires. And I'm gonna to have to undo this switch here um, and get to this switch so that I can look inside of it and see if there's any corrosion or anything inside that is causing some issues. So that is my first, so my first step really is to, is to check those bits that I've just said. Let me turn that out and come, come out. Oh, and uh, don't forget, if you like this video, don't forget to hit your subscribe button. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to turn on your notifications. And you can follow me on social media, which will be linked below. So I've cleaned up the plugs, I've put them back on, I've put their headlights back in because I'm going to need that to do one of the tests, 
I've warmed her up because I need the engine warm as well because it's no good running it while it's cold so now here is the test now if I remember rightly that was somewhere in the region of about 30 something when I did it the last time so uh, let us get off our multimeter and of course it is going to get to fair noise there so it may be a case of going over to the voiceover in the studio so first things first volts volts ignition let's see if she'll start she starts so we put our black lead into there and we connect that to there lights are on do you believe no they're not they're off oh excuse me what so I stick that back up switch the lights on and we've we've gone down we were originally higher than that but we've gone down <coughs> so there's nothing more I can do there I've gone through everything and everything looks oh we're going uh, up and down so everything's checked out there so what I'm gonna do now so uh, battery wise it's going down but anyway so what I'm gonna do now is I've done that my wiring diagram flies away what I'm gonna do now is, is that I'm gonna check the stator before I go any further because if I can eliminate something then I know where I'm going so I've cleaned all the plugs up there must have been something wrong somewhere because I have reduced the actual resistance so I'm now getting a different reading down here at this plug one thing I forgot to check was is the battery charging so let me just check that so now this needs to be between 13 and 14 in order for it to be charging and it is uh, not charging so you at 11.42 so if I keep losing <laughs> behave behave yourself stay right I need to try and jam these in so I can get to the stay like that are you in you in right i'm going to try and rev up to about 500 so as you can see she's not charging so something's not quite right so turn her lights off turn her ignition off so what we're going to do now is move over to this data we're going to check this data and then we're going to see where we go from there. Now, in order to check the stator, we've got to check the ohms and the voltage. So what I've done is I've got some... Uh, these are piggybacks. If you're uh, used to um, mechanicking or auto-electric... Well, um, uh, auto-electrics, that's the word I'm called. These are actually piggybacks. So it's a um, female connector with a male connector on it, which means you can piggyback off it. So I've got these and what I've done is I've crimped them so that I can put my test meters in and still free my hands up. And I know I've got a good connection. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick one in there. Oh, dropped one. One over here. Now according to the Honda diagram, according to the Honda diagram, Honda manual, Haynes manual, Haynes manual, the resistance should be between one 0 0.1 and 1.0 that's the word I'm looking for so I'm going to go over to ohms and I'm going to go right the way down here to 200 on the ohms and I'm hoping you can see that from there I'm basically going to stick this into that one which goes in quite nicely this into there okay and that's it okay that's dropped to 4 so that's 0.4 so if we come out of this one and we go into this one. Um, that's 0.4 again. So we come out of this one and we go into this one. And that's dropped 0.3. So I've got one of the stators, one of the coil packs has dropped and it's dropping, it's fluctuating between the two. So that, although it's still within the um, specifications, that's not good. 
Next test is to actually take this out and ground it to earth, which, in fact, if I go to there, okay, that's fine. So I'm checking to make sure it's not leaking out to anywhere where it shouldn't be leaking, and it's not. So my next step is to go here and check. And again, I'm not leaking out to earth. And go over to here and check. And I'm not leaking out to earth, which is quite good. So the next thing I have to check is to see how much electricity is coming through. Now, this is here uh, is voltage for direct current. I want alternating current, which is this one down here. So I'm going to swing it around to 200 here. It is going to get noisy again because unfortunately I do have to start the engine of the bike. But what I'm going to do is, because I need to test this across the board, I'm going to stick these into here and these into there and I'm making sure that it's not going to come into contact. I'm going to switch the ignition and lights are off, starter up and on our multimeter we're reading 2.6. I do actually have to come round for this one. So our multimeter is reading 2 point, which is basically 25 volts. And I'm looking at around 50 or thereabouts. I'm going to take it up to 500. I apologise for the noise. So that was 3.2 on that one. So that one's registering 3.2. What I'm going to do is just pull this out here leaving that in there, pull this out of here and stick it into this one over here making sure I don't touch the frame uh, I'm back to about the same voltage look so there's the voltage, it's 2.3 again we're going to rev it up to 500 so that's not raised much at all, that didn't raise one iota and then my last check is I'm going to take this one out of here and stick it into here. And then, oh, look at that. Oh, as one drops, one's multimeter. Come back here, multimeter. Bloody thing. And that is not a good sign because I'm now reading only 0.7. And if I accelerate. Which means that my stator could be knackered. So, okay, so the next thing to do is to get the stator off. So that's it, that's all I can do at the moment. So I've gone through everything, I've cleaned up the plugs, I've cleaned up the switches, everything's fine in that aspect. I've checked the stator, and the stator is showing that there is a fault and I need to replace it. So there's not enough electricity coming from the stator into the regulator into the battery so next chap change this data thank you very much for watching i hope this has been informative for you and i will catch you the next time don't forget if you like this video give it a thumbs up don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications and i will catch you the next time cheerio for now